at Subway. Start your day the flavorful way by adding new guacamole to your favorite breakfast sandwich. Perfectly made with a hint of jalapeno, our guacamole turns up the flavor to your breakfast. Try it today on a hot and toasty egg white and cheese. Subway, eat fresh. The BS Report is a free-flowing conversation that occasionally touches on mature subjects. The BS Report. The BS Report with Bill Simmons. Welcome to the BS Report, taping this on a Monday morning. In what's become, I guess, a, a, a twice-a-year tradition, the, the, the devastated Cousin Sal BS Report post-Cowboys Loss Apocalypse uh, podcast. So I guess we're here, Sal. Here you go. <laughs> Oh boy, I'd sign up for twice a year. Really, it seems like five or six times a year. But is it quarterly? I don't even know. Is it, I don't even can't even keep track well, at this point. I don't even know what to say anymore. I really like. Uh, listen, I would love to uh, to have been young and, and gone after someone like me on Twitter. I'm, 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 you know, I'm, I'm an a hole. I deserve everything I, I, I get with the Tony Romo stuff. But and if you want to say he blew it. That's fine, but I don't think that's the point. I really don't think that's the point of this whole thing. I mean, yeah, if, if anyone else is in there, they lose by 30 points. I really do think that. And, like, and that's not just hyperbole. You look at Flacco, Eli, Vic, all these people that people, yeah, everyone's putting them in the Hall of Fame. They couldn't stay within three touchdowns of Manning. And if anything, if what yesterday proves is everything I've been saying for years, the Cowboys have to be perfect. Romo has to be perfect for the Cowboys to win. I mean, once in a while, they'll run into like a Rams team that self-destructs and it doesn't matter. But to beat a good team, he really does have to be perfect. He has to set a record to be the greatest, to have the greatest game of all time. I mean, is, is, did, didn't you see that? Or is it just, is it really just about Romo's interception? Or is it about the defense couldn't get two stops? Two stops in the whole game. I thought Romo, Romo was incredible. It was a great game. I really enjoyed it. Um, it was it was a wave of the future, or, or a, a glimpse of the future when every NFL game will be in the in the 40s and 50s. Yeah. And uh, I I don't blame Romo for that game. I think the 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 unfortunate part of it was when they got the ball back. You know, in the back of your head, you're thinking, "Oh man, boy, would it suck here if Romo did one of those sure. Romo plays?" Sure. And then he and then it happened. And that, that I, was it, the it part that was weird. It, it kind of happened. happened. It, it wasn't an awful interception. Had Danny Trevithan or whatever his name, it was, he was horizontal to the ground making that catch, and maybe it was forced in there, but um, it wasn't worse than, you know, Peyton's interception, which was six yards underthrown a uh, couple series before. But I, I just look at these guys. I look at I look at Carson Palmer had like, what do you have, like 175 yards, and he wins. Easily over the Panthers. I look at Kaepernick. He had 40 yards passing and a three-touchdown lead against the Texans. Dalton, 212 yards and an interception. He beats the Patriots. If, if Romo had 212 yards and an interception, the Cowboys would lose by 17 to the Patriots. I just think it's unfair. I don't know. I don't know what else to say. Oh, it's it's, de- it's definitely unfair. It's, yeah, but well, I, the shame of it yesterday. I wouldn't put that that interception in the in the collage of terrible end of the game Tony Romo moments because right. as you said the guy made a great play. Yeah. It was just the irony of of having it in the back of your head like oh mm-hmm. man I hope he doesn't screw up the greatest game in his career here with a with a pick and then it happened but yep. um he he's having a really good season. Oh yeah. We have him for we bet him before the year for uh, most passing yards and he's I think like a little less than 300 behind Peyton Manning, but Peyton Manning might not play week 16, week 17. And not that he'll take off fourth quarter against Jacksonville and some of these other teams, you know? Yeah. 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 Romo has Romo's thrown for 1,523 yards. Yeah. He's completed 72% of his passes. He has a 114 QB rating. Thank you. I like this. He's thrown 13 TDs and two picks. Yeah. And not just that, but, uh, He's made some really great plays. Mm-hmm. Like he's made, he's made, I'm going to say like seven or eight plays during the season that has, if you're just watching the Cowboys, you go, whoa, you know, like a couple of those plays. It's been the best year of his career. The defense is awful. Yep. And the good news for you is it's you're in a division that's one of the worst divisions of the, of the past 15 years. I mean, you might be able to go to the playoffs. You go six and 10. Well, not only that, if they got their shit together, and you, you saw how the Eagles played the Broncos, you saw how the uh, the Giants played the Broncos, they didn't even come close. And 
you know, so I think like obviously we wouldn't play the Broncos in the first round if we were lucky enough to win the division at six and ten and make it. But I do think anyone who came to the Cowboys in the first round game would would have a tough time. Forty nine. Yeah, you're at least going to be able to score. Yeah. Right. And you know the weird part is you traded all those picks for Morris Claiborne, mm-hmm. who had a decent second half, but um, he's been picked on the whole season by these teams. I, it could be a lot worse. You're two and three. Right. You you just lost a nail biter to the team that's easily the best team in the league, and you have a bunch of division games coming up, and uh, you should be able to go eight and eight would win the division by two games. Now all, all this said, um, lost to the Chargers after a double digit win last week. Uh, lost to the Broncos after a double digit win. They lose to the Redskins Sunday night at home. I could see Garrett uh, being served as papers. I could see them having to shake it up a little bit. Well, and in that case, it would actually be a smart move because right. you'd be two and four, but you'd, be, you'd still have a chance to make the playoffs. Like, mm-hmm. that's when you want to make the thing. You know, we talked about the first coach fired bet in our Vegas podcast yeah. before the year. And uh, Tom Coughlin was not a name that either of us mentioned. Not at all. And yeah, I would say he's right in the mix. Very strange. And, you know, this time every year in October, um, they make Tom Coughlin's face pink uh, for breast cancer right. awareness. But, it, you know, it turns bright, bright red come November. Like a, uh, like a I didn't paper. realize that was for breast cancer awareness. Yes, that's, that's what great. it is. Yeah, because oh, that's really nice of him. I yeah. think that's nice. Yeah, I mean, he's very, he's very giving. But 0-5, uh, that's a rough thing. And they play Thursday night in the Bears. Well, I was thinking about ways to cheer you up after that uh, Cowboys loss because I knew you were so – you must have been just so fired up. It really did seem at one point in the fourth quarter like, oh, they're going to win this game. Yeah, I, I mean, then, I never – I always have my guard up. So I didn't yeah. think uh, – when the when the Broncos tied it, I figured, all right, we're, we're still going to – it's still going to blow it somehow. I'm, I'm just praying that it's not Roma. I hope it's a – Something that Manning does miraculously, and not Romo that blows it. And then just like at the end, like you need um, you need a, a, a three quarters of a yard to get a first down, and mm. one and a half yards gets a touchdown, and stops the clock, and gives the ball back to the Cowboys, and they get like one and an eighth yard. You know, it's it's just everything works perfectly then against us. But, well, I made a short list of of things yeah. that I thought would cheer you up after that game. Um, first of all, the Giants are zero five. I like that. I think you hate the Giants. That's great. Mm-hmm. Um, our Browns. The Browns, yeah. we, we were kind of hoping they'd be like our secret little uh, favorite fun extra team coming on now, three and two. Yeah. Lombardi, Tied just for sign, first place. Just sign Romo away, Lombardi. Just just do it. Just sign. <laughs> Have a couple good years. Come in second Have- for the Broncos in the conference. That'd be great. Do you think Josh Freeman should have taken it personally that the Browns didn't really make a full pursuit of him. <laughs> I don't know if he's in his right mind to take anything personally, but, uh, cause I, cause I would have taken that personally. All right. So we got that. Go ahead. And then, uh, that's all I got. No, that's good enough. <laughs> oh, I had one more. Uh, Josh Freeman on the Vikings. Yeah. We might be back together. It could you happen. Are? That could happen. Well, you Who know, knows? what's funny. You, I mean, you had a tough wait. You know, it doesn't compare to this Cowboys loss, but you know, Brady, you know, Brady blows it for the Patriots and. Russell oh come on! Wilson. It was it was a monsoon. No, I know. He couldn't even grip the ball. But you took you took. Well, listen. Uh, in, in some ways, Pac-Man Jones intercepting your quarterback's pass is, is worse than what I had to go through. I mean, wow. anybody he, he should maybe be fired, Tom Brady, for that. But anyway, come you on. you were you it's were pouring uh, rain. You were upset. You you were tearing up. Speaking of pouring rain, you gave me a call yesterday. I did. Yeah, yeah, you did. Hold on, wait. Let me see if I have that. <clears throat> Cousin Sal, sports guy here, I'm sitting at an Applebee's in Chula Vista. I'm not going to lie to you, I've had somewhere between 12 and 175 Bahama Mamas. I'm totally intoxicated, and I, I have every right to be. All my heroes crapped the bed today. My ex-boyfriend, Joshy Washy Pudding Pop Freeman, got cut last week. And then today, Tom Brady and my... Snuggle doodle, Russell Wussell, Hustle and Bustle Wilson throw interceptions to lose a game. The only way I can explain this is by doing my best Morgan Freeman impersonation. Keep in mind, I'm drunk and really white. But here it goes. Josh Freeman, 
Tom Brady and Russell Russell Hustle and Bustle Wilson crawled through 500 yards of men and soundness, the likes of which I can't imagine. Anyway, I think I'm a jinx, like Oliver, the cousin on the Brady Bunch. This doesn't happen to Joshy Washy Pudding Pop or Tommy Tootsie Roll and Russell Hustle and Bustle. It's not for their association with me, Sports Guy Simmons. What? Wait a minute. What's this? I'm getting a message on one of my 37 smartphones. Josh Freeman was just signed by the Vikings. And yeah. Tom Brady and Russell Hustle and Bustle just won a Nobel Peace Prize for being cutie patooties. Life is good again. Sports guy, over and out. Jonas Valanciunas. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Jonas Valanciunas. I don't remember that at the end. saying that part. <laughs> the Josh Freeman to the Vikes is exciting. Oh, I don't care that he's been terrible for 10 months. <laughs> I thought they would have tried out Adrian Peterson, a quarterback first. They really did. I feel there's nothing that guy can't do, but uh, if I'm Adrian Peterson, I'm, I'm at least semi excited about I Josh Freeman. So. I Plus, have one. I'm doing this off memory without any research, but wasn't there a Thursday night game when Josh Freeman destroyed Minnesota? I'm going to say it was a year ago, a year ago. Really? Yeah, was, um, uh, I don't know. I don't remember that. I remember having the Vikings, and then Josh Freeman came in Under and just Chiano? killed them. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe yeah, it was either a year ago or two years ago. And it, I always have a a little pet theory when uh, somebody looks awesome against a certain team. You see this in baseball too, like certain pitchers. Right. They kill a team, and then your team ends up trading for them, and it's usually because that that pitcher always used to kill them. Yeah. Oh, so you're saying uh, he might. Okay. Oh, that oh, was yeah. his, that. Well, but that who's no, oh, that was Tampa Vikings. Thing. Yeah, last year, October twenty right. fifth, they beat the Vikings in Minnesota on a Thursday night, thirty six mm-hmm. to seventeen. Right. And Josh okay. Freeman uh, was really good in that game, if I remember. All right. He so had, he's good in Minnesota, maybe. All right. Well, I he yeah he was three touchdowns, no picks, two hundred sixty two mm-hmm. yards, but um. I like him in that in the in the dome. I like him with Peterson. I don't know something about something feels. Something well, it feels can't right be worse than what they have already. I mean, the Cats experiment's not going not going to go well. I don't think. And they well, there's some bad. Move. We have to figure this out for gambling. There's some really bad quarterbacks involved now. We got Brandon Whedon. Yeah. I don't even know who's starting for the Bills. It might be Thad Lewis. That's what they're saying now, right? Um, whoever's playing for the Vikings. Mm-hmm. Um. We have uh, Geno Smith, who's who's hit or miss in, in the biggest way. Blaine right. Gabbert. Yep. Ryan Fitzpatrick was horrible yesterday. Yeah, he was bad and going to uh, – Carson Palmer's been secretly horrible, really, the whole season. I agree. And uh, there's one more. Um, oh, Matthew Stafford without Calvin Johnson. Yeah, that's bad. Did you see that yesterday? I saw that, and I think the, the Packers needed every bit of that, that Calvin Johnson. <laughs> they really play. did. I was I was trying to think of how many players would swing a line that much because I think it was what six and a half or seven. Right, it was like seven. Yeah. And then Cal Johnson, they scratched him. It was it was ten by game time. He that moved on three and a half points. Non quarterback players that that yeah. would swing a lot. Yeah, he's he's number one. I think. He's would you say one. would Peterson I guess swing Peterson. a line more than I guess Peterson? Right. I guess he would. But that's it. Just those two. And you know that wasn't the only. There was another. There were two more big swings. Uh, the Patriots went to minus two and a half. They were plus one at one point this, uh, this past weekend. I know, and, I, Eagles, and I knew we were going to lose when that happened. That was. I don't know what the weather or what. And then the Eagles were ended up being a favorite against the Giants. So one of those two came through for the public. I think with the Pats, for whatever reason, they've done really well in horrible weather. Mm-hmm. I don't know if people. I heard it was going to be bad weather and just like, oh, Brady, bad weather. This is going to be good. But yeah. bottom line is the Bengals scored 13 points, you know. Yeah, he, he, the, Pats should, yeah. the Pats should be able to win a game when they hold the other team to 13 points. Yeah. That wasn't a great loss. Definitely. And they and they weren't even really in the game. The Bengals front seven just demolished them. And now you it, play a team that's not going to score 13 points. The Saints. So we'll get to that. We'll yeah, let's, let's do the uh, – Let's do the week six lines. There's some good ones. By the way, did you enjoy the uh, late night Raiders game last night? I really did, and I think it's. <laughs> I be, loved it. They they should have their home game should be every Sunday night at midnight, whatever. It ended at two forty in the morning Eastern yeah. time. Do it at eleven. I love it. I mean, how how many years did the Cubs play day games 
uh, with at Wrigley Field because there were no lights. I think you could yeah. do that. Let the Raiders play the midnight, the crazy Halloween game, the Halloween esque game where uh, you know, and then we'll read about the uh, parking lot casualties the next day. I had a reader named Max from L.A. who suggested that every Raiders game is the late, late night game. Yes. And it just becomes their thing. Yeah. Just eight, their eight home games are late. And then I was I was thinking, well, you could just make that Raiders and Chargers. And just they own that late, oh, late I, night game. Yeah. Just one of those two teams. They they And that's would become part of their identity. I, I thought it was cool. I really liked it. Well, a lot, uh, I, I liked it too. Uh, we, a lot of people and I, we think we joked uh, that it might not be good for Rivers. He gets very cranky when it gets past like 930 on a Sunday. But It's his bedtime. That was fun. That was fun. You know the other thing? I, when it's Thursday night and it's prime time and the game sucks, it, 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 it just it's kind of makes you angry. Yeah. But – it felt like a choppy turnover filled game like that late at night made made more sense. Yeah. But I just wonder if divorce rates on the West Coast I was worried about that too. How much they increased. <laughs> yeah, we, it was a lot of football last night. I mean when you don't have breaking bad and you don't care too much about homeland and whatever. <laughs> just yeah, my wife was horrible. waiting to watch Homeland last night. Yeah. And and I was watching the Raiders game and telling her to hold on, hold on and mm-hmm. she was like I I don't understand. Like Football's been on for 14 hours. I don't understand. Like she was just dumbfounded. Put a game it. on at two in the morning. I'll watch. I don't sleep during football season anyway. So. I like the concept though. Would you rather, if you had to pick, would you rather have the Sunday late late game or would you rather rather have a Thursday night? Um, just abolish Thursday completely and we move that game. Yeah, to get rid of the Thursday night. I, I think the players would have less trouble with you know buys and 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 rest time if, if, the, if it was just a later sunday night versus a thursday i don't know why they the, would do that the other thing they could do is move it to uh they could have started at 8 15 pacific time so it would like just to kind of coincide with the tail end of the nbc game what do you mean they did oh i i thought they started as early as they could because of that stupid field uh, regulation thing with the oh, I thought they started at 8:30. Yeah, no, I think they did, but it had to be that was as early as they they needed x amount of time to fix the field. I don't know what it was, but yeah. I also like the idea of messing with everybody back east. Yeah. Where if you're a real football fan, you got work the next day, but you have Terrell Pryor in your fantasy league or whatever, like, and and all of a sudden you're up till three in the morning. I think that's a great wrinkle. I like I like ruining uh, ruining people's Mondays. Mike, do you really you really have to stay up till twelve forty five to call your bookie to get a halftime bet in? Come on. <laughs> let's do uh, let's do week six lines. We we have a a doozy of a Thursday night game. All right, I'm very excited two, about it. Two two and one heading into week six. Uh, I pick yep. the lines, you pick the lines, and we compare Thursday Giants. At the Bears. Had trouble with this one. Me too. I, I went uh, Bears by eight and a half. All right, that's, that's exactly what I said, and it's seven and a half. Ah, uh, that was in the, what I initially had. So the Giants, who really might be every bit as bad as the Jaguars, mm-hmm. are, are getting five to six points of respect every game from, from Vegas. And I think they could lose that respect at this point. When you lose by double digits at home and a pretty much must win against a division rival, you could start treating them like a bad team. Some uh, some giant stats. They are, according to ESPN Stats and Information, the third team in NFL history to allow 30 or more points in each of its first five games. Wow. They are also the second team in history, joining the storied 1954 Chicago Cardinals, to turn the ball over at least three times in each of the first five games. Mm. Their 182 points allowed are the fifth most in league history through the first five games and the most since 1967 before either of us were born. Yeah. And to finish that off, the four teams in front of them on that list finished with a combined record of 10 and 40. Wow. And then I saw... Eli was the first quarterback, Super Bowl winning quarterback, to start his team 0 5 at any point. And then uh, Roethlisberger has a shot at being the second this week. But, Do you think Archie Manning intervened and was like, Eli, I wanted Peyton to be the one? Yeah. <laughs> it's, Eli, it's, you're it's, so it's his lucky turn now. You so have to throw an interception and blow it. 
Peyton's in a great situation now, and I want you to really, really be awful. Yeah. It could um, be. It's like waiting. Uh, the, the younger sister has to wait till the older sister gets married. Yeah, I bet there's a lot of that goes on. <laughs> so I don't, I'm not sure the Bears should be favored by seven and a half points against every, anybody, but I'm also not sure the Giants should be getting this few points against anybody other than Jacksonville. I like the Bears. I thought, I thought they, they impressed me against uh, the Saints, their defense. The Saints defense. Yeah, they hung around. Yeah, they do all right, and they're not. You know, it's, you know, say what you will about Cutler. It's not a Brandon Marshall team anymore, and you got Jeffrey out there. You know, he could he could have career games. So a l- Jeffrey more had the had the super subtle uh, two hundred yard game mm-hmm. that uh, I had that game on a lot, and uh, and at no point thought he was headed toward two hundred yards. Yeah. Um, anyway, Sunday, these Sunday games, as good as they were yesterday, pretty lousy, pretty lousy early games. And then, uh, and the worst game, according to Vegas all time, uh, later Sunday afternoon, but green Bay at Baltimore. I don't know what to make of Baltimore anymore, because as soon as Flacco threw that pick six yesterday, you just assume Miami's going to close that game out. Yeah. And then Baltimore just turned it up a notch. Terrell Suggs has been out of his mind this season. He has both uh, off the field and on the field. I agree. <laughs> Out of his mind. Yeah, usually a pick six on the road almost always spells defeat. Especially, but. yeah, in the, uh, the alleged momentum swinging uh, pick right. six. But Miami just, you, you know, it was interesting. I, I don't know if I don't know if this was the reason they lost, but they score that touchdown. They have all that momentum. Yeah, that's right. I said momentum. <laughs> The kicker kicks the kickoff out of bounds. Yeah. All of a sudden, Baltimore's at their 40. It, it was just like, it, it was a deflator. Why yeah. are you kicking the ball out of bounds? What are you doing? Just kick it out of the end zone. Well, I read somewhere that he didn't mean to kick it out of bounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he almost, uh, the, the field goal attempt almost went out of bounds, too, the 54-yarder. But So Baltimore, they didn't even score in that drive. They go three and out, I think. They punt, mm-hmm. but now Miami is, like, inside their own 20. Yep. Nothing happens for them. They punt, and then, my, then the Ravens put together that winning field goal. But they only went, like, I don't know, 35 yards for the winning field goal. It was a teams, terrible kickoff. I, the, the, look, the Ravens, I think the Packers also, neither has had a, a great game start to finish, I don't think. Am I missing something with the Packers? Maybe the Green Bay did have one. Yeah, against they, Washington, I, against I Washington, like, I guess they did. But Packers have had, like, weird running back issues. I'm not ready to give up on the Packers, but – uh I, I thought the Dolphins played pretty well. The one thing I worried about with them was was their uh, the blocking. Yeah. But oh, so we never guessed this line. No. <laughs> <laughs> I have uh, Packers by one and a half in Baltimore. All right, I said two, and it's three and a half. Packers by three and a half. Packers by three and a half. Ooh. Wow, not a lot of respect for the Ravens at home. The Ravens really are good you know, at home. Uh, uh, you know, we're excited about the Browns. Ravens now three and two. Um, what's Cincinnati? Wait, am I missing that? Are they the Ravens are a terrible three and two though? I, know. I don't. I don't feel good about that three and two. Hey, three, the Miami win was pretty good though. Three teams at three and two in the AFC North. Um, all right, Philly at Tampa Bay. I hit this one exactly. I don't know how. I had trouble with this line. But... Wow, I had trouble too. I I went with Philly by one and a half. Oh wow, you better. get it too. Very oh. nice. Very nice. Yeah, that's Foles the... against Glennon. That's uh, embarrassing for the Bucks that they're not favored against uh, Nick Foles. Yep. 0-4. Oh, uh, this is a soft spot, soft schedule run for uh, for the Eagles. So they could, they could, as much as we like the Cowboys yesterday, <laughs> devastating loss. They could, they could make some moves here. We should mention the uh, two bye week teams this week are Atlanta and Miami. Right. Right. Pittsburgh at the Jets. This is a weird one because we don't know what's going to happen with the Jets tonight. I actually like the Jets getting 10 tonight. Oh. Seems like a lot of points for Atlanta. I took Atlanta. I figured they're going on a bye. They let it all hang out. Does that seem like a lot of points for them? Maybe, but how many must win? This is like their 17th must win this year, week five. So. Are we sure Atlanta's good? No, no, not at all. That should be like Jackson out. I feel like Atlanta and Houston are at that same spot. Mm-hmm. Where so we're giving them benefit of the doubt from things that happened last season. Yeah, I didn't man. fully realized until last night that Houston's just not the same team. We're screwed with that bet we made. I was the Colts looking are at some win of those that division. Bets. 
I was looking at them. They're bad. What did we have? Houston to make the playoffs? No, we had it. We it was the Pats and Texans to win their divisions, right. and then the Jets and Raiders to not make the playoffs. Mm-hmm. So the move would be to just bet the Colts right now to get out of that bet. Right. Oh, the, the Colts are to win the AFC South are minus one eighty. Wow, already minus one eighty. Well, I well, guess they're, they're going to win the division. They're good. I guess yeah. I guess they'll split. Andrew those Luck's really good at football. I'll tell you what, we may lose that, but we made a nice one this week. Jag well, under two and a half wins. Are you kidding? Oh, that was a beauty. Yeah, oh. that was a beauty. Did Where'd you they see hide that one? And then we made that bet, and it and it broke Luke Jokel's ankle. That's right. They traded Monroe, and and uh, <laughs> Jokel broke his ankle. They trade Monroe to give Jokel the starting job, mm-hmm. and he breaks his ankle. And now they don't have either of their best tackles that they had a week ago. That was like one of the only strengths of their li- of their team. Yeah. No <laughs> longer a strength. Nope. And you're you're doing a dance and a half if you have MJD on your if you picked them ninth overall in your fantasy draft. But, NFC uh, East odds, by the way: Dallas plus one ten, yeah. Philly plus two fifty, Redskins plus three hundred, Giants ten to one. Well, I think it'd be Philly or Dallas, but you might as well wait. They, they play each other like week sixteen or something. So that Dallas even odds is pretty good. Oh come on, Pit Pit at Jets. Pit at the Jets. I have the uh, Jets by three and a half. Wow. Yeah. I had Pit by one. It's Pit by two and a half. That's idiotic. That is dumb, right? The That's two and the two dumbest team, line of the year. Maybe two and three team getting a two and a half from the 0 and 4 team. I really think that's the dumbest line we've had all year. Nobody has obviously watched the Steelers this year. Right. The Jets aren't bad. Like, they're well coached. I know it's heresy to say Rex Ryan can, can be involved in the word well coached, but they, right. they've been pretty well coached this year. Geno's not awful. They both they had can, buys last week, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think oh, no, that, no, I'm sorry. No, the, the Jets, Jets played tonight. Okay. Pittsburgh had a 10 days off. I think that line's going to swing. I think the Steelers stink. Two weeks. Yeah, boy. I don't know what to do. Let's watch the Jets tonight and see what happens. Yeah, let's watch the Jets. all going down. Carolina at Minnesota. Josh Freeman. Boy, Carolina was the sucker bet of the day yesterday, I think. Do you know anyone in any pool that didn't have them minus two of Arizona? Oh, I know. I, I I picked them in the super contest. I picked them in my column, and yeah. I wagered on them. So thank you, Carolina. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. I, I, Peterson shut down Steve Smith because I, uh, I was watching a lot of that, believe it or not. And, uh, you know, what actually happened was Arizona's defense was, was really, really bad. good. And then Cam, Cam had a killer killer uh, interception inside the 20. Yeah. That right, right when they were about to seize control of the game. Cam was terrible in that game. Chased them down, though. Yeah, I have uh, Vikings by two over the Panthers. All right, I said two also, and it's two and a half. So I'm beating you. Mm. Oh, it's uh okay. We tied that one. All right, Oakland at KC. Oakland in the house. Gotta say, I enjoy watching Thoreau Pryor. It was fun. He's okay. Yeah, it's fun, fun to watch. It's going to be interesting. What's going to happen with that dude? Uh, you know, I read that uh, there could be as many as nine quarterbacks like listed on the on the first round board next year for uh oh yeah that was in peter king's column i saw that that seems like a lot that is a lot and then what do you do if you're someone like the raiders do you i guess you i guess you do take someone if there's gonna be nine i guess you could take one no matter how good terrell Pryor ends up being do the browns just take two and hope to go one for two (laughs) (laughs) Uh, if you were the browns would you trade both of those first round picks for eli manning right now for eli yeah those two first round picks you have right now the year 2014 first round picks, both of them for Eli Manning. How old right is now. Eli? He was in that draft He's with Roethlisberger. 31. 31. Boy, that's right there. I mean, they, they Brandon Whedon, they drafted him. He was 29, right? <laughs> yeah, he's, that's the thing. He's uh, he's only eight months older than Brandon yeah. Whedon. I would do that. Yeah. You sure. would do that. Yeah, but then I have to root against the Browns. I don't want that. Well, here's the thing about that. That Colts pick, which we thought might have a chance to sneak into the top seven, that now it looks like the Colts are good. I know. That's, so that pick's in the 20s. That didn't work out. Eli was born mm-hmm. on January 3rd, 1981. Mm-hmm. So he turns actually 33 in January. Right. That changes. I don't think I would do it now. You wouldn't do it? I would now, not for a 33-year-old. Oh, well, you're the one who brought it up. Why I, I thought else? he was younger. I'm gonna just start an argument with I was myself. 33. I, it'll be 33. 
He's going to be 33 next season. Yeah. Well, he's uh, he's not used to he's not used to having a good defense anymore. So that would be surprising for him if he went there. Mm. I don't know. It's a tough one. What you Maybe a first team. and a second. If I'm the Giants, I'm getting the hell out of this season. I want to be as bad as possible, and I want to get picks. Uh, what would they do? I don't know if you do that if you're the Browns. I think, I think yeah. the fans would be excited if they took a Bridgewater or Hunley or one of these. One of yeah, the, it's not like they're going to win the title this year. Car. Trent Richardson continues to look mediocre, though. I mean, he, he, he's he been. I agree. If you watch those, the, I watched a decent chunk of those Colts games that he was in. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know if you could get a first round pick for him if you watched that game yesterday. If you did now, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I might, the Browns might have sold high on, the, on him. Yeah. McGay, okay, he's all right. He just too. doesn't. He doesn't have that explosiveness. Like the cards have this guy that I've had on both of my fantasy teams for the last three weeks, who I really like. Who I'm Andre just Ellington. waiting for them to play. Yeah, he's good. Yeah, so just play Andre Ellington. Why are you playing Rashard Mendenhall's right, cadaver? Every time they give the ball to Andre Ellington, something happens. Well, this is what this is it. You can get it. You can get a running back in the third round or the sixth round and get lucky. That's, yeah, that's probably. All right. Let's keep going. Oakland at KC. Did you guess the line? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I have the Chiefs by eight. Uh, I'm gonna get this slightly. I said twelve, and it's ten and a half. Mm. Right, that's I'm off high. point and a half. You're off too. Yeah, it's too high. You think so? Yeah. Well, that's a three teamer for us. Chiefs really easily could have lost that game. They are a soft uh, five and zero or whatever they are now. I agree with you. That's too high. But you know their fans are starting to travel though. Do you see like the the they had like the whole lower section of that Titan Stadium with yeah. Chiefs fans. That was impressive. Starting to believe it. St. Louis at Houston. I'm gonna try to not watch this game. Yeah. I mean, this is it's a, stay it's a perfect game. dilemma. Like, what do you do here? You finally get a break. You're not going against San Francisco. You're not going against Seattle. You have St. Louis at home. Do you, do you put Ty Yates in there, or do you give do you give Shaw one more shot to right the ship? I would have waved them right after yesterday's game. Wow! Just would have, I would have told him to knock it on the bus. Maybe no, just out of policy, if you have four pick sixes in, in as many weeks, you, you got to go. Maybe that is, that's, it's just in your contract. What about enrolling him in a drug and alcohol rehab center, even though he doesn't have a problem? <laughs> I think that would be a really bold move. Josh we Freeman's haven't seen like, a team do that. You're worried about me, Josh Freeman says. <laughs> uh, I have the Texans by seven. All right, you're going to get this. I said it should be ten and a half. I thought this oh, was a must high. win. I went way too high. But we're putting this on a teaser. Texans win this game. What is the line? Oh, I'm seven. It's seven exactly. Sorry. I'm not putting Matt Schaub in a teaser. Hell will freeze over. Really? Yeah. That, that, I'm not not putting any money on that guy. Ah, the Rams, uh, Rams. I'd rather win money from from that guy than it, put money on him. It took the Rams almost every minute to to beat Jacksonville yesterday. I know they ended up winning by two scores, but yeah, they stink. They, they didn't climb it. They didn't close that out. Cincinnati. Blink Abbott. Blink Abbott's first interception. It was. It almost looked like a punt. Oh, Did you geez. see it? Yeah, he threw it like probably 16 yards over Justin Blackman's head. You know they're a decent first quarter team. I wonder if they're if yeah. you took them in the first quarter, Jacksonville, you'd probably win uh, four to five weeks. I really think they should have covered that game. Yeah. Well, they yeah. Scored, St. Louis got covered. It's funny you and I both trashed the Jaguars in, our, in my blog too, and I said, and then it's like, oh boy, oh I don't know, don't take the Rams in an eliminator. You never know what that means. Right. <laughs> Cincy at Buffalo. Uh, I, I put this in the Vegas zone because we don't even know who's playing QB for the Bills, but he's going to be bad. I had the Bengals by four and a half. Uh, I went a little higher. I said six and it's seven. So I get this one. Yeah, well, there you go. That's a bad game. These are all bad games, right? Green Bay at Baltimore is decent. Now the rest are all lousy for Sunday. Early. That's another game where you just tell Andy Dalton, and they did this yesterday too, Andy. Don't take any chances. Don't make any mistakes. Yeah. yeah. Just get out of this game with no turnovers. My and EJ Manuel, 6 to 1, offensive rookie of the year, uh, that took a hit. Took a pretty good hit last week. Um, it really did. And and it actually was looking good. I don't know who wins that bet, though. Maybe you're Andre Ellington. Is he a rookie? Huh? Is he? What is this year? I'm going to look. Is he a Clemson guy? Uh, maybe I'm confused. Uh, Detroit at Cleveland. 
Andre Ellington is a rookie. Yeah. Well, I wonder what his rookie of the year odds are. We should look at that. They'll, they'll have them out today. Tell our sportsbook dudes. I, mean, I don't know who else is. Geno Smith, I guess, is up no, there. I didn't even, they didn't even have offensive rookie of the year awards or props anymore. Tavon Austin was the uh, was the uh, favorite. He he disappears in these games. Yeah, he's he's actually on the fantasy murderer all star team. Right. <laughs> he's been awful. He might he might not be that good. No, I know. They, I, we haven't even seen flashes from him. No, you've seen, I think he scored. I have him on my. Uh, I have him on my fantasy team in the league that you were kicked out of, and he just hasn't been that good. Well, sorry to bring that up. No, he's probably spiting everyone in that stupid league. It's like, why should I do? Why should I help you out? Um, Detroit at Cleveland. I have the Browns by one and a half. They should be able to win this game. Wow, you're off on this. I I said Detroit by two. And yeah. Detroit is favored by three. Just because I'm off doesn't mean I was wrong. No, I know. And you know what? They have to win this because as, as much as we were loving it Thursday night, oh, they're going to the Super Bowl, the Browns, they're three and two. They lose this week. The next two games are at Green Bay, at Kansas City. They yeah, are three and is, five it's with Brandon Whedon. It's over. This is the season for them. Yep. Because they, if they can get to four and two, I think 10 wins takes that division. We're so then they just have to go six and four the rest of the way. We're taking them. Uh, weeds. I'm not betting on weeds. No, I can't do weeds. I, I want to bet on that defense. Though. If Johnson's not playing, I'm, I'm taking Cleveland. Oh yeah. Well, we saw yesterday what happens to Detroit without Johnson. Yeah. Um, Tennessee at Seattle. Now we're in the late afternoon games. Boy, those early games were bad. I went high on this because of the Fitzpatrick 12th man combo. Mm-hmm. would make me nervous to have any kind of money whatsoever on the Titans. I, I have Seahawks by 11. Oh, you didn't go high enough. I said 11 and a half, and it's 13 and a half. Ooh, Fitzpatrick. <laughs> Holy mackerel. That's an extra four points cause, not, just because he's involved. Seattle, their home versus road, the difference is uh, astonishing. It, it That's one of those where you feel – you feel bad about laying that many points. Yeah. But then it's like 13 to three in the third quarter and Fitzpatrick has to start throwing and you feel awesome. He's not going to come back from that. No way. Yeah. If they fall behind 10, the game's I, I did like them yesterday. I thought they uh, they put up a fight against the Chiefs. They could have rolled over. I um, just, I didn't really feel that strongly about that game, but I, I, I just wanted Casey's defense against Fitzpatrick. Yeah. Same, same rationale for this week. And Seattle... Uh, you know, kudos to the Colts, and we said if they kept it close. Last week we said if they kept it close or won, that's it. We'll, we'll put them uh, right in the upper echelon. But I, I think if they call that right and that black punt, block punt is a touchdown and not a safety, then you're up 17 nothing. I don't know if they come back from that. And that wasn't the only shaky call in that game either. Yeah, we call that a touchdown. Yeah, it's that was one of those. It's the National Football League, and – and you're going to have those kind of plays. I'm right. sorry, I want to sound like an ESPN guy. Um, Jacksonville at Denver. Here we are. I mean, this should be it. This The Subway sandwich would just all, all be about this game, right? We've <laughs> never done this before with a regular season line. This is, I think, the sixth year we've done this podcast with yeah. the guest alliance. It's the first time in the regular season I've ever emailed you my guest the day before because I didn't know if yeah. I would inadvertently run into the line before uh, – before the game, mm-hmm. which is actually what happened. Peter King in his column today had it. Um, I picked the Broncos by 28, and, and i got to be honest, I'm just honored to be here. What a great moment <laughs> for this podcast. Well, I said, the uh, middle of the week, I worried the same thing. I said, it's gonna be, I'm going to find out. And I said, there, it shouldn't be less than 28 points. It shouldn't be more at this point. Let's let the betters figure out which way it goes. I had 28 also, and guess what? It's 28. Wow, we're good at this. We are very good at this. <laughs> tell us exactly I, how bad Jacksonville is. You know what's funny is that half point is going to be huge. If it goes to the point five, you might start talking me into the Jags a little bit. Oh, no. That's Don't a lot it. of points, man. Well, listen, Tony Romo wrote the blueprint on how to how to beat the Broncos, and now, you know, Chad Henney, or, you know, they, they, one of them can figure it out. How do you get fired up for this game if you're Denver? If you're Denver, now you can't. Yeah, well, how do you how do you possibly go through the whole process you need to go through to get fired up to play the other team in this game? No, but 
but I think they score 50 by accident. Like, is the team going to have to score 50 to beat Denver? Here's what I would do. Um, no, I don't think so. I, yeah. I just think they've gone against teams with bad defenses. Oh, man. They really haven't played a good defense yet. Well, I was looking at it. I guess the Chiefs, they'll have the Chiefs twice. And I know they have Houston, which isn't that great. And do they have New England? Well, that's the thing. Like, this schedule that they had that was allegedly, you know, going to get tougher in the second half of the year, now that Houston game doesn't even look that bad anymore. Right. Mm-hmm. We'll score four. Um, Let's go through it quick. Hold on. Uh, all right. So they have 11 games left. Let, let me just point out while you look at this, um, and I wrote about this in my blog last week or two weeks ago, uh, when the when the Broncos crushed the Ravens in week one, yeah. one, of, uh, one of the places we like to legally, um, theoretically, gamble through had it at 350 to one that the Broncos go undefeated. And I emailed you. I was like, we have to jump on this. And you said, settle down. I said, settle down. Cause you have a voice activated email. And I was like, all right, I'll settle down. And then I'm like, no, I, I got to do something. I waited 20 minutes and I went back and it was 35 to one. They acknowledged that they were, they were wrong to make it 350 to one, but would, would honor the, everyone who betted at 350 to one. So uh, you would better pray that this team loses somewhere. Go well, ahead. Who do they have? At Indianapolis, week seven. Okay. At San Diego, week 10. Home for KC, week 11. Yeah. At New England, week 12. At Kansas City, week 13. Yeah. And, and then that, they're at Houston, week 16. And yeah. at Oakland, week 17. Well, that's what I was going to say. The 16 and 17 are even more, you know, that, that's when they'll sit guys probably, right? Even if they're 14 or no. Who do they have 16 and 17? Uh, at Houston, at Houston, Oakland. Houston will need it. They oh. have f- five of their last eight are on the road, and none of them are easy games. All right. You better hope. They're not going 16-0. and 0. It's not happening. You really better hope. Their defense isn't good enough. New Orleans. They, their defense England. gave up 48 points yesterday. <laughs> I know. They just can't be stopped is the only problem. They yeah, but at some point. And they get underneath. There's so many damn weapons. Trust me, as somebody who's rooted for an unstoppable offensive juggernaut, you're going to have the game where passes get tipped and shit happens, and if your defense isn't good enough, you're going to lose. And that's yeah. what's going to happen to them at some point. Plus, cold weather's coming, by the way. It's going to get colder, yep. Yeah, they were in a dome yesterday. New Orleans at New England. This is your team. Pats by three. Wow. I said two and a half, and it's one and a half. Oh, I take that personally. I'm killing you this week. You would take that? Line. You take the Patriots. Yeah, they're not going to lose two in a row. The problem is, and this, this depresses me more than even any Cowboys loss, Rob Ryan is uh, somehow lighting the world on fire with his defense. He gets off to a lead. He, he clamps down that Kenny Vaccaro, is, uh, he could be like defensive rookie of the year. He like six tackles yesterday. I think if they're up like 13 nothing on a team, they're, playing, they're beating you in a different way, and it's scary. If the Pats lose two in a row, there's real real signs of panic for that. Don't you think this is the second best team in football, the Saints, right now? They beat Atlanta, who's not as good as we thought they were. Yeah. They won in Tampa, who just waved the quarterback of that game. They killed Arizona at home. They beat Miami really badly on a Monday night, and they won in Chicago. I was impressed yesterday. I know. At that it's, Peyton it's Manning a, and then Jimmy Graham. There's your there's your second MVP. It's a so solid it's five and zero, but they have they haven't had a, a really really uh, signature win yet. I would say. I think you need a Gronk at seventy five percent to win this game. Yeah, I think I think their feeling was try to split week four and week five, and then have a healthy Gronk for this game. Well, if the Dolphins keep losing, you don't really have to worry. I can't remember the last time the Pats have have uh, almost been a pick'em at home. Wow. Yeah, it is a little low. I don't agree. I will say though, Tommy Kelly went out yesterday, and that uh, f- the middle of the front four for the Pats is suddenly looking a little civish. Yeah, it's not good. The Will Fork thing is it was a killer. I mean, everybody loses guys. I get it. That that Denver lost their left tackle. He's great too. But didn't uh, seem to kill him yesterday. But yeah, you're gonna want that big body. No, it did. It, in the fourth quarter, they were they were kind of jamming it down our throats a little bit. I'm concerned. So many weapons for this thing. Sproles, 
Thomas Colson, like you got like Tune and Stills. These guys are free to make all pros instantly. The um, bottom line is if Amendola just rolls the right way, we score and we're yeah, down three. That's true. And Dalton wasn't going to do jack in that game. That's true. Uh, Arizona at San Francisco. I have uh, the Niners by nine and a half. Uh, I said and 10, I it's, it's, 11, 10, it's 11 and a half. Oh, you're killing me this week. Yeah. I like the cards in that game. No. The Niners lost another dude yesterday. Well, they might keep it close, but we got uh, – I, I think – what are they down, five defensive starters now? Yeah. Now, if the one guy could change his name, it's all going to – so Have gonna, you liked what you've seen at Kaepernick since week one? No, I don't understand how they're doing it. I'm telling you, they're up three touchdowns, and he's not doing a thing. Well, yesterday, Schaub did it for him. Yeah. And Frank Gore is, is I mean, we should maybe talk more about him. He, he, does, he doesn't go away, right? No, he's been great. He's been really, really great. Doesn't make any sense. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how they're doing it. I was thinking um, Niners 9-2 nine to, to win the NFC. You put two teams ahead of them, you still put New Orleans and Seattle, right? Because they would have to win three road well, games at this point. We have a great NFC South bet, though. What do we do? What do we do? We have, like, plus 260 that an NFC South team will be in the oh, Super Bowl. Oh, right. It's South team. That's, the South is the Atlanta and New Orleans. Yeah. Yeah. So we have New Orleans. We have New Orleans minority. Right. Okay. I, I have like a question that. for you, and I'm going to be interested to see if you know the right answer to this. Yeah. What non-quarterback has the most fantasy points in our league right now um, that you're not in? I knew this Friday. Uh, you're saying this. Let's see. It's coming off this. Let's see. We're doing the 49ers Arizona game. Is it Jimmy Graham? It's Jimmy Graham. Yeah. Jimmy Graham has the most points out of any non-quarterback in our fantasy league right now. 95. I'm telling you. Try to watch this guy. <laughs> Number two is Jamal Charles. He's open every play. Who's only point six behind him. Number three is LaShawn McCoy. Yeah. Number four is Adrian Peterson. And number five is your beloved Jordan Brandware, Des Bryant. Yep. I guess the one nobody was expecting was Julius Thomas in the number nine spot. How did Des? Uh, Des had like one off game, didn't he? Uh, he yeah, he won. Top two or three. Game. Jordan Cameron is in the top 15. Yeah. Uh, Alshon Jeffrey has 62 points already this year, but uh, your your dude Frank Gore is at 61. It's weird. Like we we put such a premium on these running backs and getting them early, and it's like the running backs they're all kind of around the same. They average like 10 points a game. I know. You know. Yeah, I, I was thinking about it. like I'm in this. You know, I I do have some guys that like me from from 20 years back, and I'm in this league. It's a snake draft, and I had the ninth pick. You know, I I went like. You know, I went MJD and Chris Johnson because I'm like, I'm going to take two running backs and I'm going to take three in the top five. And yeah. it doesn't matter. You could take Gore and Bile Powell or whoever, and, and you're, you're right there in the same place. So. This was, out of all the fantasy years, this has had the most terrible running back seasons that I can remember. Yeah. You, you, with the top four round running backs, you're batting like 40%. Yeah. But don't you notice, like, when you're at work, people come up to me still and ask, uh, what do I take? Do I start Ridley or Stacy? I know. You know like, yeah, oh, just God. That is roll the dice. Point flip. Who, who the hell knows? I don't know what the dice is. Pick up Andre Allenton. That's my recommendation. Yeah. Tough. Uh, all right. Sunday night, Washington at Dallas. Uh, really have to be on a Sunday night? Oh, yeah. We follow more misery with more misery. It's interesting. The fact that this is a Sunday night makes me think it's going to be a three-point game that comes down to the last three minutes because that's what has to happen. I have the Cowboys by six. That's exactly right. I said four, mm. and it, it jumped up to six. Now with the Washington come off the bye, uh, it'll be close. You're right. i got to be honest. I think Washington stinks. Can't they move this to three in the morning? So like, is there, is there a baseball you. team in Dallas that needs it's to use field? It's a good idea. Can't they do idea. it? Yeah. I need to watch this. And then uh, Monday night, Indy at San Diego, good game. Yeah, I'm not willing to give up on San Diego. I think that I think that was a weird game last night. It started at a weird time. Some weird stuff happened. Terrell Pryor randomly threw a half a half a field touchdown pass early. Like it just it was one of those games. They had fourth and one. They they inexplicably hand off to Danny Woodhead to run in through the middle. Right, <laughs> like he was going to score on that. 
uh, I'm not, I'm not against the Chargers. That I, the Colts are favored by two. I have them by two and a half. And I um, like the Chargers. I think you're going to get this. Yeah, you get it. I said, I said San Diego minus one. It's Colts by one. Yep. I get it. That'll be a good game, I think. That it, cause it, yeah. it, it doesn't seem like you could blow out the Colts under any circumstances. And, uh, and Rivers, I think, is legit. Yeah, uh, Rivers is legit. He sucked last night, though. Yeah. Had some bad plays. But I, I like that. That It feels different than la- than the last two years. Like his, his body language is different. You know Definitely. about body language. But, I mean, they're, they're not going to make the playoffs. They're just too far behind now, aren't they? Right? Yeah, you'd have to get the other wild card. Get the Chiefs and Broncos in there. Too much. Yeah, I'm not willing to throw the Chiefs in the playoffs yet. Oh, really? I know they're five and zero, oh, but we've we've seen fast starts before. No, I know. I just don't, I they need think... to get to ten or eleven wins, and and they, you they could still go five and six the other way. They haven't we, played Denver yet. We love. I know they have. They have two games against Denver. Um, don't they play uh, the Pats too? Um, let me look. I remember when we took them over, we liked their we liked their. Yeah, schedule. I remember loving their schedule, but the, but stuff changes with that schedule though. Hold on, I'm gonna look quick. I'm gonna look too. Hold on. Uh, let's see. So they have, well, that Houston game's easier now. They're at Denver. Oakland, they have two Denver Houston, games left. Oakland, Houston, Cleveland are the next three. Oh, my God. Their all schedule's, this is one of the all-time easy schedules. Yeah, we loved it. At Washington. It's even easier than it was before the season. Yeah. Maybe they, they go undefeated. Let's do that right. Holy <laughs> shit. Yep. So they have two San Diego games left and two Denver games. Left. They, they haven't played anyone in their division yet. So they have six AFC West games left. Mm-hmm. And then uh, they play Indy at home. They lucked out. They got Indy at home and Houston at home, which I actually Houston remember. They, at Buffalo, at Washington. Those are their tough road games. Yeah, 13 and 3. Lock it down. Yep. There you go. Because what do you want to promote? Well, I'll promote that I beat you again. Now this is, You did. Uh, two weeks in a row, and I'm up two to one. And uh, Yeah, that's it. Now, Modern Family Cast is on Jimmy Kimmel Live tonight, and Corn later in the week, Elton John, Emily Van Camp, Owen Wilson. Chris Paul, Blake Griffin, and DeAndre Jordan, your guys. Oh, wow. what day is that? That's uh, Thursday. You want to come by? I offered your friend Brad uh, a fantasy trade over the weekend. And first of all, it took, it took him like 12 hours to get back to me because right. he was discussing it with some other guy. So then my window, missed, my window missed that night to pick up anybody as I waited on the Brad trade. What was it? What I was offered it? him Eli Manning and yeah. Julian Edelman for D'Angelo Williams. What? Yeah. Are you that hurting at running back? I needed another running back for this week, and he was starting Sam Bradford and Ryan Broyles. Oh, no. For week six. Yeah. I was like, wow, I'm give, I'm, I'll give you two starters, and you have running back death. Give me D'Angelo Williams. And they yeah. somehow countered with Reggie Cobb and Phil Rivers for D'Angelo's. All right. You so have to be careful offering forth. a trade, because if he deems it um, insulting, you could end up uh, face down in a, an alley somewhere. I know. I thought it was a fair trade. The irony was that um, everybody did bad in every trade we discussed. So Good. it just goes to show you. Never make fantasy That's trades. Right. Doesn't matter. Hey, quick baseball. Are you watching any? Yeah. Yeah, I like it. What did I say? I said Indians Braves uh, last Monday. <laughs> it's looking good. Oh, you picked the Braves. That's right. You did yeah. pick the Braves. Indians and Braves. Um, that was a big Dodger win last night because now I think – I, I just think they close out. The, I, the Red Sox are going to lose tonight because Cobb is out of his mind. You think so? Yeah. Yeah, Cobb's out of his mind. He was on our my fantasy team. And he's he's been like Cy Young for the last two months. Mm-hmm. But then uh, I think we can steal tomorrow with PV. You know, our friend Daniel. I'm going to tell you right now. Maybe this is bad. Has a lot of money. On no, the Red I, Sox. I'm well aware. You know this. So he's yeah. emailing you crazy. So. Well, he's he was. He had a bit, he wins a lot of money if they win the World Series, and he's like, he gets he twenty to, to one if they win the pennant. He wants to hedge it. What's the, more fun of winning your own team when your own team wins you a lot of money? He's got to hedge the pennant bet. The twenty to one. I mean, they're they're almost out of the the Tampa series. Yeah, but I was saying, I I didn't think he should do anything this series. I thought next series is when really? he Yeah. Yeah. But then I'm the same guy who had, who was going to win all that money with the Pats in the Super Bowl two years ago and didn't hedge it at all, and then they yeah. lost to the Giants. So. Anyway, it turns. It is weird yeah. with these baseball series, like as dominating as the Red Sox are. And then when you get to the eight teams after those stupid one-game play-ins, 
every series is like even or minus 130 or minus 150. You know? It's like, what was it all for? doesn't matter. I thought I thought those Sox, my daughter had a, had a soccer game that started the exact same time as the Red Sox game. Mm-hmm. Nice. If we if we hadn't went to a World Series, I would have figured out some way not to go to the soccer game. But since right. we have two World Series in the bank, I went to the soccer game. I'm a good dad, and uh, and then we then somehow we don't knock Price out of the game, and he's yeah. still in there. John Lackey has to give up his requisite four runs in less than six innings, which was a lock for every playoff start he has. And uh, it was just the, the price was just lingering and the Rays were lingering. And it was like, oh, my God, this is going to be the worst Red Sox loss in a while. But then Poppy hit one 700 feet and that was it. He hit one. I think you turned three inning ending double plays, too. Right. Like the, 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 yeah. Including seven. one one crazy one that Pedroia did in the seven. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a really likable Red Sox team, I got to say. It's, yeah. it's the most likable one since the 04 team. Dodgers Red Sox would be a lot of fun. It really would, right? It almost seems like it, it. We've been saying this, but it just seems like it's too easy. And you told me privately that you would actually root for the Dodgers if it happened. I did. I would. I would switch. I love Magic Johnson. No, it, it would be. It would be phenomenal. It you would, would have great. to come up with some kind of bet with Magic <laughs> for the World Series of Baseball. Yeah, some crazy for the World Series of Baseball. <laughs> Magic's Twitter has been disappointing. What's he doing? I know. I don't know. I expected like 70 Magic tweets after Sunday night's win, but no, yeah. nothing. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I think uh, the Tigers have been just looming this whole time because we traded them Iglesias. Mm-hmm. I just feel like, like wouldn't that be an all-timer if he, if he makes some great play in, the, in game seven, if we got to the next round and then the Glacius somehow saves the series for Detroit. And Definitely. B- it becomes the worst trade of all time. It's all matching up the rotations, though. If they can't get Verlander to pitch two of those games next series, yeah. they're, they're going to be in trouble. Plus, Cabrera's not 100% healthy. Right, yeah. Yeah, Red Sox-Dodgers would be there the There you best. go. I, I want to get there. I, I, I don't care who we play. Cousin Sal, we'll talk to you uh, next week. Congrats on your week six uh, thumping. Thanks. At least something good happens in my life. All right. Talk to you soon. Good job, you. Target the sun off. Whoa. Thank you for downloading the BS Report with Bill Simmons. Too much fun. Check out more podcasts at the iTunes Music Store or at PodCenter at ESPNRadio.com. Peace out. Got to say, Gola, great call on grabbing Subway for lunch and getting guacamole on our subs. Told you this new guac really amps up the flavor. Yep, something adding up. Things can be great. Guacamole on your sub, a new co-host to replace you. What was that? Oh, no, nothing. Subway now has deliciously rich new guacamole made from ripe Haas avocados with just a hint of garlic, onion, and jalapeno. Discover how new guacamole turns up the flavor on any of your freshly made favorites. Subway, eat fresh.